A kitchen has two cookie jars, jar one and jar two. Jar one has six ginger snaps and nine chocolate chip cookies. Jar two has four ginger snaps and eight chocolate chip cookies. The probability of choosing jar two is 0.6. So it's midnight, I can't see what I'm doing, I grab a jar at random. Given that I picked a ginger snap, what's the probability that it came from jar one? Now, this is gonna be an exercise in Bayes' theorem, so let's just put Bayes' theorem on the board first. We have our probability space X. We're gonna have two events, B1 and B2. We'll have that B1 union B2 is X. The intersection of B1 and B2 is the empty event. Bayes' theorem is gonna be a statement about conditional probabilities. So if I have conditional probability of B1 given A, it's gonna be equal to conditional probability of, we switch our events, so it's gonna be probability of A, given that B1 occurs, and then I just multiply what's in the second slot, so that'll be times probability of B1. For the denominator, we write that term out again, and then we're gonna add in a term like that for each B that we have in our breakdown here. So if we had B1, B2, B3, B4, we would need four of these terms. In this case, I only need to put a term in for B2. So I'll have probability of A given B2 times probability of B2. If we wanna put numbers to this formula, we have to figure out what each item means. So I read through the problem again, and then what we want is gonna come out in our last statement. So we'll have, given that a ginger snap is chosen, so my conditional probability, the given is that a ginger snap is chosen. So A is gonna be the event a ginger snap is chosen. What is the probability that it came from jar one? So we want the probability of jar one given ginger snap. So B1 is gonna be jar one, A is gonna be ginger snap. And then I can follow out the rest. So since B1 is jar one, B2 is gonna be jar two. Now we just have to figure out what numbers go where. Okay, so let's take a look. If I have jar two, we know the probability of jar two is gonna be 0.6, so that means the probability of picking jar one is gonna be 0.4. Okay, the sum of these two, that's gonna be my B1 and B2. The union's gonna give me the whole space, so the sum of the probabilities has to be equal to one. Now, how about the conditional probabilities? So I wanna know about choosing a ginger snap. If I'm in jar one, I wanna know the probability of picking a ginger snap. So the idea is I just ignore the data that's coming from jar two. So in jar one, I'm gonna have six ginger snaps, nine chocolate chips. So we have 15 cookies total. My probability of getting a ginger snap is six over 15. Probability of getting a ginger snap given jar two, in this case, we ignore the data from jar one. So I'll have four ginger snaps, eight chocolate chips, 12 cookies. So our probability of picking a ginger snap is gonna be four over 12. Okay, so those will simplify to two over five, one over three. Now, we just plug into Bayes' theorem. So we're looking for probability of jar one given A, given that we have a ginger snap. So that's gonna be our probability of A given jar one. So that's gonna be two fifths. Then I just take the probability for jar one. So that's 0.4. We write it out again. And then we're gonna do the same thing, but only with jar two. So here, probability of a ginger snap given jar two, it's gonna be one third. And then the probability of jar two is 0.6. Now I can just compute. So I crunch my numbers down, and then I wind up with 0.444 repeating. So that's our answer. Now, Bayes' theorem looks intimidating, but the methods behind it are elementary. So the idea is, in our quotient, we're just taking items that appear in conditional probability, and then just seeing what happens when you break your space up. Now, what are we interested in? We're looking for conditional probability of B1 given that A occurs. 
So by definition, that's gonna be the probability of A intersect B1 divided by the probability of A. Let's take a look at our picture. So what we have here, I draw in our space X, I split it down the middle. One half is B1, the other half is B2. We draw our A in and we make sure we give a little bit to B1, a little bit to B2. Now note, that writes A as a disjoint union of A intersect B1 and A intersect B2. So, let's see what the items in Bayes' theorem give us. We have conditional probability of A given B1 times the probability of B1. We rewrite that conditional probability. It's gonna be probability of A intersect B1 over probability of B1. The probability of B1's clear out and we're left with the probability of A intersect B1. Okay, we can repeat that with B2. So we'll have, for this item, probability of A intersect B2. Now, because of that disjoint union for A, the sum of these two items is just gonna be the probability of A. So that's how I get this denominator here. Then, you note, know, in the numerator, we're just looking at this term. That's gonna be our probability of A intersect B1. And then, you note, know, this goes back to the definition of our original conditional probability.